Hello everyone and welcome to our admitted student day. We want to welcome specifically our optometry pathway students. Congratulations on all of your hard work. As a future MCPHS optometry pathway student, you are on track to your goal of becoming an optometrist. My name is Rachel Draper and I'm joined here with a couple of our current students. I'll let them introduce themselves. So Faith, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself first. Hi, my name is Faith. My, I'm a second year pre-optometry student and I'm from New Hampshire. Thank you. Karen, you're next. I am Karen and I'm a third year optometry student at Worcester campus. Thank you both so much for being here and sharing your experiences as MCPHS students. Today, we, be, we will be providing you with an in-depth overview of your pathway program, covering both the undergraduate experience through the graduate program uh, up until graduation. So to start, there are a couple of benefits I really want to highlight that you have as a pathway student at MCPHS. First and most importantly, I believe, you will be guaranteed an interview if you meet minimum requirements for admission to the optometry program. So this program, it's a seven year program in length. You will spend three years as an undergraduate student in the pre-medical and health studies program. And then you will transition out to Worcester to finish out your doctorate in optometry. There is an admissions process in the middle of that. And as long as you meet minimum progression requirements, which I will go over in a little bit, you will be guaranteed an interview um, and will most likely be admitted to the program at the graduate level. Secondly, more has to do with financing. Merit scholarship that you've received as an admitted first year student is renewable for all seven years of your optometry pathway program, meaning both the undergraduate and graduate portions. So not only are you cutting out a full year of study, normally this would be an eight year academic journey. You are cutting out that one year. You're also getting more merit scholarship than a normal student would receive. So it does make this pathway program and this academic journey a little bit more affordable for students. As an optometry pathway student, you will, you've been accepted into an accelerated track to earn both your Bachelor of Science degree and your doctorate degree in, like I said, a total of seven years. With your curriculum, you will be completing all of the required prerequisite courses uh, for the graduate program, as well as completing healthcare focused electives. This combination of coursework is designed to ensure that you have the academic foundation required for a rigorous graduate program. Through the School of Arts and Sciences, which is where you'll all be starting, you will work through the pre-medical and health studies undergraduate curriculum. These three years of undergraduate coursework is really designed to ensure that you are set up for success once you get into the rigorous graduate optometry pathway program on the Worcester campus. So Faith, I already mentioned that she's a second year student, so she's almost uh, all the way there, one more year left until you are transitioning out to Worcester. How do you think the couple of years that you've done so far has prepared you for what's to come in the optometry program? MCPHS has done an excellent job preparing me for the optometry program. Not only have I made awesome friends at MCPHS, but I've also excelled in my resume building. MCPHS has offered me the opportunity to become a part of POPs Pre-Optometry Professional Society. As a first year student, I was the treasurer and now in the president. Um, along with that, I have been able to access jobs through MCPHS and make sure I have experience in an optometry office. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing that. I do want to dive into a little bit more of what the experience is like on the Boston campus, especially in your first year at MCPHS. In addition to the coursework I've mentioned, you'll be exposed to the many support services that MCPHS has to offer. The first really is a class that all of our first year students take. It's called Introduction to the Major, and it will introduce you to all of the support available to you as a student. Uh, the first is the Center for Academic Success and Enrichment, otherwise known as the CASE. This is where you will access your MAC team. Your MAC team as an undergraduate student at MCPHS is made up of two people. One is your faculty mentor. Your mentor as a optometry pathway student will be in the School of Arts and Sciences, more specifically the pre-medical and health studies program. And then we also offer you access to an academic coach. Both of these people are really there to ensure that you are successful in your classwork and your academics and building that resume, as Faith mentioned, and getting involved outside of the classroom, but really just to help you navigate 
those undergraduate years to make you as successful as you can possibly be. So the case can really assist in general academic advising with course selection, scheduling, time management, study skills, things like this. Your faculty mentor there is really to offer you mentorship and guidance through those undergraduate years if you are looking to get involved um, on campus or if you're looking to do something outside of campus in the Longwood medical area. Uh, to really build out your patient care experience. You know, these people are here to make sure that you are taking advantage of everything that MCPHS and really Boston as a healthcare hub has to offer. Another piece that we do offer is the Center for Professional Career Development. Students have access to career advisors who host workshops for topics such as personal writing statements, um, interviewing, finding shadowing, volunteer and patient care experiences, interview practice, and you're going to need to interview for the admission to the graduate program, but you also will likely need to start practicing interviews for any part-time job you get on, on or off campus. Um, so it's always helpful to be able to run through interview questions and, and polish yourself so that you're prepared for a real life interview. We also have in our admissions office, a unique person designated to um, the pathway student. So you as an optometry pathway student, We'll have to go through another admissions process as you're transitioning out to the Worcester campus and into the graduate optometry program. We do have someone designated in the admissions office to help make this transition as smooth as possible by providing you a timeline, application guidance, and planning to make sure that you're on track. We organize information sessions to ensure that you are really, you have all the information possible so that you are successful in um, applying and being admitted to the optometry program. So I wanna get your, your guys' take on how you've used these support services. So Faith, I know you've used them before, so can you share your experiences? Some of these offices? Yeah, so I've used almost all of MCPHS's support services. One of my favorite support, support services that MCPHS has to offer is the Writing Center. I know I personally have gone to the Writing Center almost every time before I have a paper due. I write a rough draft and then they, I go in and they check it for me, um, they perfection it. And it's really helpful to me because not only do they give you positive feedback and like help it, critique it, but they make sure that you're understanding what you did wrong. So then next time you go back, you're a better writer. Another support service that MCPHS has to offer is an online tutoring system where you don't need to make an appointment, which I really enjoy, especially now with COVID, uh, where I can just hop on and get automatically paired with a tutor and get the help that I need at any hour. Another support service that I really enjoy out of MCPHS is CASE. Uh, I've utilized CASE a lot, not only for creating the schedule that I need in order to make sure I don't fall behind in school, but CASE has made sure that I'm getting um, into the correct classes that I need for prerequisites rather than fighting over a class that I need as a prerequisite but not, might not get into. They make sure that I'm automatically enrolled in that class and I don't need to worry about that. Um, another support service that I use at, at MCPHS is the tutoring system from an upperclassman who has previously taken the course, but has passed with an A or B. And I really enjoy this support service because you can go with a group of friends um, in person or online, and they have like a whiteboard that you can use. And obviously you can get your slideshows up and it's just very nice to have someone who's previously taken the course who already knows what the exams look like, who can help you. Excellent, thank you so much for sharing that. I do wanna point out that these academic services don't just stop as an undergraduate student, they, would do, they do continue onto the Worcester campus. So Kieran, can you share your experience as a graduate student in using the support services that MCPHS has to offer? So yeah, uh, like you said, they, did, they don't just end at your undergrad, you still get the same help in your um, graduate program because you know, just because you're in a graduate program doesn't mean you know it all. You still need help from upperclassmen. I'm a tutor. I've been a tutor for about two years now. So 
And like Faith said, it really helps to know what the classes are like from someone who's taken the class. Uh, not just, you know, like knowing what's on the exam. Yeah, that really helps because I had tutors who really helped me. Uh, but just sometimes you just need a perspective from another student because teachers are going to teach you every single detail. But you need someone to give you that big picture and say this. And then, you know, from a student perspective, it's easier to understand sometimes. So the help doesn't end. You have it all. Thank you both so much for sharing that. Um, I love that we've really gone over all of this support because it's important that you as a student are using these support services to ensure that you're successful in meeting those minimum progression requirements, as I mentioned before. As an optometry pathway student, you will need to maintain a 3.0 overall GPA, as well as a 3.0 GPA in just your prerequisite courses. And then you also will be preparing to take either the OAT or GRE test, both are graduate entrance exams and either can be accepted for admission to the optometry graduate program. Uh, so that's something that you will definitely wanna keep in mind as you're moving through your semesters as an undergraduate student, taking advantage of these support services to ensure that you are getting good grades and, and getting the right test score that you need for admission. Something that I also wanna really highlight is attending an information session hosted by an internal admissions counselor as you're preparing to make that transition from the pre-med program to the optometry program so that we can review your you know, class year's application timeline, the admission requirements, really giving you all the information that you need to be successful. We're here to make it straightforward and easy for you and really understandable. And we're here to support you in that process. Um, in years past, and I predict in years future for the Optometry Pathway Program, this is an application that you'll be preparing through the OptumCast system. It's kind of like common application for optometry school. Uh, in the summer between your second and third year, so that's Faith will be preparing it probably this summer um, as she prepares to transition out to the Worcester campus. Um, and like I said earlier, as long as you are maintaining those minimum requirements, you're guaranteed an interview. So you'll be invited to Worcester to interview with the faculty. Um, and from there, they will decide um, if you are, it will be admitted to the program. If you're admitted, which most students are, uh, you will finish out your undergraduate coursework in your third year, and then you'll make the transition out to the Worcester campus to start your graduate studies. You know, Karen is here really to share her experience at the graduate level. We wanna make sure that you guys have a good understanding of what it's like on the Worcester campus since you will be transitioning there in just a few years. Uh, so Kieran, can you share with us kind of what your experience has been like in your classes and what the graduate classes are like? Yeah, so, um, you know, after doing your OAT and your two years of undergrad, you get here and you're like, I got this, I'm in optometry school now. And then the first day there, you're sitting there all day, nine to five, because the course load first year is rigorous. It's, it's, it's a lot of classes, especially the first year around it is overwhelming, uh, especially the first semester, because just because all you do is study, 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 you know, I mean, do take breaks, but that's all you kind of do. And then by the time you finish your first semester, you kind of get the hang of it and say, okay, I think I got this. Because by your second semester, third semester, you do start to see um, you go off campus, do screening. So it's like, okay, this is why I chose this. I want to be here so I can see patients, you know, it gives you that. So you start going out out of your classes, you're in labs a lot more. Um, so, and then as you get to your second year, your class load sort of start, it starts to decrease, but by third year, you are in clinic a lot more, you know, twice a week, three times a week. Um, so first year, harder than the second and the third. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. I think that's okay. These are these programs are post, supposed to be rigorous. You're gonna be providing healthcare services later on. Um, can you talk more about that campus clinic experience that you mentioned, as well as any upcoming clinical rotations? I know you're gonna be starting those soon. Yeah, so like I said, you kind of start seeing patients in the clinic in your second year. Um, third year, you're going offsite clinics at community health centers. And so you start to see a lot more disease than just primary care. And you do rotate through um, clinics that are specialty focused, you know, glaucoma clinic, peds, contact lenses. So you get um, experience in a bit of everything before choosing where you want to be in your fourth year. Because fourth year is really that full year of clinic. So you want to make decisions as to where, what do you want to get good at by the time you get out? 
you know, and you can only make that decision if you had some exposure in, you know, all the other subclinical um, settings and which you get in your starting from your second year, you do a lot of primary care, but in your third year, you do all the subclinicals. So it gets you ready to make that decision in your fourth year. So you, by the time you get out and do your rotations, wherever you pick them um, all over the country, um, my second rotation is in Miami. So I'm excited for that one. Um, my last rotation is at an um, ODMD practice. So I'll get to see a lot of surgeries. So I'm excited to see that too. Um, so you get a bit of everything in your third year and fourth year is a lot more focused on where you want to be. Thank you so much for sharing that. We're excited for you to go out and start practicing. Um, I do want to ask a little bit more about the community on the Worcester campus and how you know, the students in the optometry program interact together as well as how the faculty are interacting with you guys as well. Yeah, so um, I'm from Canada and having to, you know, moving here was, it's, it was, it's hard. It was a difficult step, but I'm glad I did uh, because I, since I came here, I don't think I've ever felt that I'm alone in this program or just being here as a student or as a person because class size is small. So you do make a lot of friends and all your peers, they know you, um, upperclassmen, they're all really nice. Like here, I feel like that they give you that sense of community that you don't feel like, oh, I'm stuck in this hard program all by myself. You know, like you're trying to become a doctor, but you're not alone. So that's, that's a good, sort of environment, the vibe that I got ever since I moved here. Um, and in terms of faculties, because the class sizes are, you know, it's, it's, it's a small class size, especially in your lab, it's about eight students per lab and two professors. So they really get to know you. They get to know you as a person, as a clinician, and they know what you're good at and what you need help with. And these are the same professors who are going to be in the clinic when you're in the clinic and not just in the lab. You know, they're not going to just teach you in the lab. And then in the clinic, you're going to get another professor who has no idea what you're weak in. So they are in the clinic. They are off-site clinics. They are in the labs. They are in your life for four years. So, and that's good. You know, they, they help you guide. They help you become that doctor. You know, you're here, you're working so hard. And at the end of the day, when you get out, you want to be the doctor who knows what they're doing. And they really do help you become that doctor. And um, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. I personally love the community feel of MCPHS. So I'm glad that you are having that similar experience. Um, you know, I, speaking about the community on the Worcester campus, I want to point out that the optometry school is not the only school that we have there. We have physical therapy students, PA students, nursing, medical imaging, a whole host of other graduate and undergraduate programs. Uh, really geared towards specific professions and MCPHS as a university, since we are so healthcare focused is really hitting home on that interprofessional experience and getting to know the healthcare system as it functions and how every single profession has a vital role and how you guys will all be working together to provide the best patient care possible. And I know we incorporate that into our curriculum, uh, especially at the graduate level. So Kieran, can you share some examples of how you as an optometry student or the optometry students in general have worked with other students in other programs to have that interprofessional um, experience? Yeah, um, I think the fact that there are other programs on this campus, it helps because you know, when if you're going to live on campus, I've lived on campus, off campus, both. Um, so and if you do choose to live with a roommate, more likely you're going to end up with another student from MCPHS. And it's, I got lucky that I had roommates from other programs from pharmacy and PA. So um, that way I got to build my connections. But if it wasn't for that, I think being on campus, being around people who are from different programs, um, that helps too, to be able to build connections and friendships that, you know, once you graduate, you're not just friends with optometry students who you went to school with. You're friends with students who went to different programs and you can just pick up your phone and say, I need help with this prescription or a PF friend, you know, who can help you with whatever's going on with you. You don't have to wait for, you know, to go to a doctor, I guess. You have a friend who's a doctor at that point. And um, other than that, I feel like there's a lot of um, IPE events that the school um, does. So where we get to see how other professions work, how um, the PAs would work, how PTs would work with their patients and how we can help each other as uh, healthcare professionals too. Like we had an event where uh, PT students helped us with their postural issues and um, 
Plus, I think being on uh, Worcester campus, um, you would get free eye exams. You can go to a dental clinic. You can get free dental uh, dental work done. You can go to a PT. You can go to a pharmacist. You can literally just go to any uh, subclinical specialty here and say, I need help with this. And most of it's free. So another benefit of being here. Absolutely, the free healthcare services, I would say. Um, you know, as I mentioned before, we are, you know, now talking to admitted students who are looking to maybe decide whether or not they will be attending MCPHS this fall. And I'd love for both of you to share with me why you chose MCPHS and why you chose this university. So Faith, why don't you start with you since you are an undergraduate student? Why do you why did you choose to come here? It took me a while to come to the decision to choose MCPHS, but um, I definitely was op like welcomed with warm hugs and smiles and just, they made me feel at home whenever I, I walked into the admissions office. And I had gone to many other tours at many other schools and I never felt as loved and welcomed as I did at MCPHS. Um, I chose MCPHS because I knew they would set me up for the pathway that I want to be in when I get older. I knew that they would make sure that I have the grades that I need and what I need in order to get into optometry school. And along with that, I knew I would have the friends that I need as well. Um, going to most colleges, you might be surrounded by people who aren't as focused on their studies versus yourself who wants to become a doctor someday. You need to focus and although it's good to have that downtime and obviously to see the city while you're living in Boston, um, you'll meet those friends. It's just you'll also have those same friends will also go grab coffee with you and sit down and study. And I really like that relationship. And as mentioned earlier, it's not, you're not only going to be friends with pre-optometry students. As a first year student, you're placed into classes with PharmD students and multiple other students. So it's nice. We're all focused on the same future. <laughs> That's so true. Karen, what about you? Um, I think I had a very similar first expression experience as Faith when I got here. Um, I felt like I wasn't just another number for the school. I They wanted to get to know me as a person from the moment I got here for my interview. And that experience didn't just end there. You know, I still feel the same that my professors want to know me as a person and what I wanna be um, when I graduate from here and what kind of doctor I wanna be when I graduate from here. And that I'm glad that that experience kind of stayed the same and it just doesn't change. Oh yeah, now that we have you here, you're kind of on your own. So I think that was a big first expression where I'm like, okay, I think I like this school over the other schools because I had gone to uh, other schools for my interviews and I felt like I was just another number. You know, They really just care about my grades. They really just wanna know what I bring in um, academically and not as a person. Um, other than that, I feel like, again, coming from Canada, I, was, I wanted to make sure that I go to a school where I didn't have to worry about buying a car and I, I have on-campus housing because some of the schools didn't offer on-campus housing and this school does. And for optometry, the good thing is our classes are in the Lincoln building and you can live on campus in the same building. So you can wake up and literally just come down and say, here I am, you know, 10 minutes before the class, you can wake up and come down. And you have the labs in the same building. You have your clinic, pre-clinic, everything's in the same building. So that to me was a big plus that I can just, I don't have to worry about you know, buying a car or any of that. So these are two big things. But other than that, I knew it's a new school. But the fact that it's a new school, they also had newer technology. Um, they have everything that I need uh, to learn. They have everything that I need um, as a doctor in the clinic, in the offsite clinic. So they've made sure that they've covered all their bases to help you become that doctor that you want to be. And those are sort of my like top reasons why I chose the school. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences at MCPHS, for sharing, you know, what you love so much about the university with our admitted students. So thank you so much for your time. That really wraps up this panel discussion. I hope you as an admitted student got all the information that you needed to help make your decision on attending MCPHS. If there are any other questions you want to cover, 
do not hesitate to reach out to the admissions office. We're here to help provide you with as much information as possible to help you make this decision. But I wanna thank you so much for attending and joining us. And we very much hope to see you on campus this fall. Thank you so much.